podcast you cheer for. Sneaker, sneaker, business, it's all. It's all. Soul Material Podcast. All right, we're back once again. It's the podcast to cheer for, the Soul Material Podcast. All right, it's T Mark the Street Shark and OGEO. All right, we're back for some more sneaker business talk. Give mm-hmm. me that, yep, give me that clarity over popularity. So, you know, we've had a couple episodes where we're just um, dedicating a whole episode to a particular brand um, just to give you uh, our take on um, some of the releases over the last uh, last couple seasons. Um, what's going on? Um, you know, we're almost halfway through 2023. Uh, um, so a lot has been uh, going on. So just wanted to see uh, New Balance has been getting a lot of love. So that's where we're we're headed in that direction uh, uh, to cover this this time. I get that clarity over popularity with some of our um, hot takes. Uh, and some, you know, some, uh, you know, interesting questions about some things that have been going on, too, um, over, that, over at the uh, New Balance brand, uh, um, you know. So just uh, kick it to you, uh, OG, you know, and. Let the people know um, what's been on your mind with the New Balance brand. We're, you know, DMV natives, um, so I think we're qualified uh, to critique uh, this particular brand. <laughs> Shark, it's hilarious because when we made the decision to make this a topic, um, I did the ad lib that um, Juvenile does with um, Down Bottom on the Rough Rider. <laughs> so I'm like, here we go, because again, um, us being DMVers, there is a significant, strong, significant history with this brand and where we are from and where we represent. And for folks who may not know, because they're now in the game and then to the collaborations and Kanye threw on a pair of New Balances eight, nine years ago. And now that's what you know about. Let's not get it twisted. I recall being in Richmond, Virginia in 2000 as a sophomore rising junior in college and i was on broad street and i ran into back in this time a new balance rep he saw what i had on and he was like you're from dc and i was like yes sir like who are you shook his hand forgot the guy's name steve something he says let me tell you something about your city he was like your city keeps me employed because your city your area dc pg county howard county Alexandria, Fairfax, so forth. Y'all are the number one market that we have that's non-running, that keeps our company alive right now, keep us afloat. And at that point in time, this is before collaborations, before you know all things they're doing now, it was straight dad shoe, old man shoe, gray. You may have gotten you know a dark gray or black here and there. You may have gotten a navy, just new balance. And the history of this shoe quite frankly, um, when the crack era came, Reaganomics and so forth, this was the shoe for the streets because um, people knew if they wore this shoe, they could literally be on their feet for hours and hours at a time. And I recall going to North Carolina. I recall going to Florida. People like, what is that in? What is that in? Like, it wasn't a swish. And if you weren't from the area, you really got clowned. So it's funny to me how all these years later, and this was 2000, um, 23 years later, we are where we are with this brand. But I wanted to bring up and I want us to really peel back the layers on how New Balance has been able to be popular, to become what they are now, still be who they are, and still true to the game and still true to themselves and how things have been strategically and also organically done on their behalf to make sure they don't go EPMD for the crossover. And um, it has been a sight to see. Because now everyone now is into the gray colorways. And I'm just like, hold on, that, that, that's us. That, that, that's us. So it's this whole debate and battle about who put new balances on first and so much. So just seeing what, what the brand has been able to do. They had their flops too, or flip flops and so forth. But again, let's not forget James Worthy had his new balances with, with the Lakers and so forth. So they dip and dab like other brands um, with their athletics and with their apparel and so forth. But they have been strong. And they have been great in the culture for quite a while now. Forget Kanye, forget everything else. This brand um, is a significant brand to the culture, always has been, but they're still true in order being a dad shoe, being a performance shoe, being about running and walking 
only, and then all this stuff just kind of comes about. So I wanted to get your take, Shark, on um, the twist or the transition and how um, they exploded in the culture and how they have been able to maintain and sustain a level of uh, popularity, if you will, um, with these collaborations and so forth. Yeah, so I'll, I'll say, you know, I'll give a, a SAT uh, question or, or statement for our audience and say, uh, Baltimore is an Air Force One as DC is to New Balance. All right. It's, it's, it's that, that survival story, you know, that Baltimore Air Force One story is unmatched. Um, the same way that DC's, uh, love and support in the streets, uh, um, propelled the, the New Balance brand because that was just, the beginning of streetwear, you know, just because they were comfortable. Um, but at the same time, it was already known that that was like the suburban, you know, running shoe. Um, but it was comfortable, but it was the most expensive one on the market. Um, and if I recall correctly, like it was like this easy science of like value, like meaning like the higher the number of the series, like the more the shoe cost so it was just like if you had this then it was like easy to be like yeah you got you must have paid that and then you they were you know mixing those up and going to the club you know what i'm saying with the versace uh, um with the new balances on you know what i mean and then you know that's like rafael Edmonds there you know what i mean and stuff like that um and then you know then mix that over to the georgetown era because there's a lot of gray going on uh, um uh, heavy in the city um uh, you know what i mean so it just all made sense uh mm -hmm. for that to be our color uh, um you know and so the whole gray scale uh <laughs> um you know you that's dc uh all the way um you know what i mean so i just want to make sure uh that that, that part was clear uh, um but um so it's cultural significance to the area. Um, but just as far as like the collaboration, I think that some of this surgence um has come back through some strategic collaborations and then also just getting some better people, I feel like, uh, um behind the scenes and, and just understanding who today's market is and who to collaborate with. Um, you know, actually investing back into basketball. And then all the subsidiaries just magically come together after you start really uh, honing in. Because for there for a long while there was no focus on basketball, mm -hmm. uh, um, not even signing a signature athlete. You know, the, the when they recruited and got uh, Kawhi Leonard after his, uh, um, you know, Spurs to to Raptors uh, uh, era, and then winning the championship, and then. Because he was a Jordan athlete uh, at one mm -hmm. point in time before mm -hmm. he was a free agent uh, as well. But, you know, when he was, you know, him signing with New Balance was like, what? what? What do they have to offer? Nobody knew. You know, that's why I was a little disappointed that his model hasn't gone. But so far, because he hasn't, you know, like we always say, you got to be able to court to perform to be in those moments. So, mm -hmm. like, um, and, and uh, you know, the downside uh, um, is that his last shoe, that really didn't hit the market very well. And it, it, it got recalled. Uh, it mm -hmm. got recalled like twice, mm -hmm. uh, um, um, you know, so like, and that was globally. You know, um, so you really couldn't go heavy into the colorways. Um, but they're, um, but I think while the signature didn't work, some of the team stuff is working with the the two way. Uh, I think they're on like model three, two or three now. Um, but this version of it is, uh, you know, the colorways are popping. Um, and then you, uh, that's the shoe that Jamal Murray is wearing uh, right now. And now he's made it to the NBA finals. So again, he's had some signature moments. Some of their uh, um, athletes, they had Zach Levine. They've picked up some more uh, um, guys on their roster that have, um, at least, you know, gotten some TV time or, or worthy of a PE or something like that. Uh, um, so really think that that's, uh, that's worked out for them uh, on the court. And then off the court, you know, you got your Joey Fresh Goods, uh, uh, I mean, Joe Fresh Goods, you know, some of his collaborations, uh, um, you know, he did the, um, they, they, he collaborated for the, um, uh, Black History Month, um, you know, the conversations amongst us and a couple other, uh, uh, lineages of it where he just keeps expanding on some of his Chicago based theme things, um, do some community work. I always love when they, when they do that, you know, and, you know, shoot, they, they, they gave Rich Paul his own line. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, he had his own little collection. Um, and then you, you know, you got your, uh, Axon Bronson now, you know, he has a, his own signature colorway shoes and everything like that. So, um, and then can't mention one of the, 
hottest designers over the past year and change just because he's the one that is literally his thumbprint on Crocs going through the roof to Leahy Benberry mm-hmm. and then bring it over to the to New Balance because even some of his uh, apparel um and um you know had the 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 yurts or whatever you know that had the whistle on the back of him where he just got to be real uh innovative because he's a real live hiker you know, I'm, uh, you know what i mean and um you know some of his models um and colorways have just been crazy so i know i've got a couple of them myself uh, um and um you know just the attention to detail um and then you know some of the retailers um as well are um, we've talked about uh, Shoe City, your city. My city is no longer in the city uh, anymore, uh, but they had their run of uh, some nice uh, collaborations, uh, even with the even them pairing with some local brands like Eat uh, uh, mm-hmm. as well. And then them doing a whole collaboration uh, with New Balance exclusively through their uh, network. Uh, I mean, through their their stores before they shut down and. You got DTLR, um, you know, shout out to June Sanders, you know, um, just, you know, come cooking up all the uh, colorways, you know, so we've, we've had a, a shoe to represent every side of the DMV now. Um, you know, if you had the Maryland version, you know, you've had a, um, a DC model. Uh, um, and then now, you know, um, the Virginia has its own. That's the latest release um, using that popular uh, 2002R uh, uh, model. That's kind of like the. Like we talked in the Puma episode, the RSX, uh, I think the 2002 R is like, you know, where the deconstructed or however many colorways that can keep coming out with them. Uh, um, but when when you do collaborations over top of them, you get the best out of that model. And, you know, I think I executed that one pretty well uh, um, for the Virginia one. So, again, retail, you know, collaborations at different levels with the influencers. You got you got Jack Harlow. Um, mm-hmm. as an mm-hmm. official New Balance um, mm-hmm. endorser. So you got the uh, the musician and now slash actors and the white, he's starring in the White Man Can't Jump. Um, you know, you've already done the commercials with Kawhi Leonard um, and, and shouted out New Balance in your, in your, in your lyrics. Um, uh, you know what I mean? So something's cooking up pretty well um, over there at New Balance and people behind the scenes actually um, are, I'd say they've have some people that are in the culture. They don't have a pulse. That their their pulse is because some of the people that that are doing the making the decisions um, are obviously you know placed there because they're part of the culture. So um, see some other brands doing the same thing. We like it, uh, uh, you know. So um, tell me where to send the application so so material can <laughs> be your cultural consultants as well. <laughs> so um, you know, but do uh, you have any specific models? Uh, you, you know, uh, that, that uh, caught your attention? Um, definitely. Um, I would definitely like to mention um, the, in my lane, the non-traditional, which is the 997S. And um, that really kind of threw me off because I'm really about the non-series and their, um, I guess, um, very exclusive, inclusive running line. Um, but the 997S, particularly, I don't know why they cost so much, and I missed out. But um, the no pays off bodega ones were the ones that really caught my eye. Um, but thankfully, as we talked about in a prior episode with the prior brand, um, New Balance um, is starting to learn that they could have a takedown colorway that could be a GR that may even be better than some of the collaborations that may catch on and may um, go hot with resale. So I was able to get a 997S. It's like an orange with a blue um, with a cream. And it looks like the perfect spring color, um, summer colorway. And um, when summer comes, you know, I rock that shoe to death. Um, You mentioned the DTLR, excuse me, the DTLR line um, as far as their collaborations. Even I'm going simple and doing the 990 DMV, which is basically the traditional black, traditional gray, and just kind of having um, DMV sewn in on the side, almost like the, like the Air Force One has their emblem on, on the side. So keeping it simple and then you're getting multiple um, color laces with that so you can flip with the black or with the gray and so forth. Um, another model that comes to mind, definitely, you already man- mentioned it, um, is the 992 um, DTLR, the June Sanders edition, the DC ones, having the DC flag in the back of the shoe to replace the USA and it reflecting how it did. Um, me being where I'm from, uptown Northwest DC, um, that was just significant. And then I always complain about 
a lot of my new balances that um, may get dirty quick because just over time, if you're dealing with oh, anything white on the midsole and how, how he did it in which it was black and, and then gray, um, the shoe is going to last a lifetime. And I'm glad I was able um, to cop those. But there is a art of acquisition I wanted to bring to the folks here during the pandemic. And it was um, the New Balance 997 Tweed. And I will be more than willing um, to show these um, on our other uh, social media platforms, YouTube, um, Instagram, and so forth. And um, great shoe, great quality. And I do want to mention that as well, as far as with New Balance, no matter what has gone on with inflation and so forth, they've made no excuses. The 992 that you got this past couple years with this retro is just as exact, what's close as exact as the original 992. So I just love the fact that they give the same quality all throughout, no matter the collaboration, you know, no matter what's going on. And um, the price points are still, I'll say, very comparative to what's going on in the world now. So they're not all sudden busting here for 350 because they give you quote unquote premium materials. So I love that about the brand. But that Tweed 997, um, it's a deep gray. And I call it the Tweed because the inside of, of where your foot bends and so forth has that Tweed material. And um, I was able to get them for $9.99. It's a $180 shoe for $9.99, which is absolutely crazy. And during that time, we talked about this, um, I think in season one, in which um, during the pandemic, because of uh, the uh, increase and the rise of reselling and so forth, where if you went to a store, even Foot Locker at one point, they would put the sales tag on the actual shoe to uh, deter resellers. So if you were actually interested, you ask for your size. <laughs> and when you got to the register and rang it up, it was like, oh, here's the price for it. Um, and that's what happened with me getting that tweet um, 997. So, of course, me being who I am, um, I definitely went around Baltimore and, and, and saw what I can grab. Um, and then you go into another local retailer where they were still full price and so forth. But um, just again, I don't know why that happened. I guess the time of the shoe, and there was a lot of times um, during the pandemic to where stores closed down. But I learned through the sharp that the markdown still went on. So the markdown still went on in the system as if the product was still sitting and not moving. So when stores actually opened back up, it was like, doom, these Jordan 1s are $39.99, these miles are $9.99, because, and it was just um, a time to be had if you were the shark or me and you were lurking and it was like any store you went to, it was like, oh my goodness. So just being a part of that time, which I doubt would ever happen again in retail, um, that tweet 997 is definitely um, a shoe that I would keep for having that kind of mem memory of saying, I always wanted these. I now got the money and I go to the register and they're $180 less than I was expecting on pain, <laughs> so, which is absolutely crazy. Um, but again, man, shout out to New Balance for just keeping the quality of the shoe. I have new balances that are still intact, not re glued at all from my college years. You're talking about a shoe that's 15, 16 years old at this time, still intact, maybe worn once, twice. Um, so you don't have to keep ringing up um, if you take care of your new balance shoes over time, nothing lasts forever, but I really love the material and um, how they construct their shoes because they are made to last. Yeah, I think that, and I think that that's, um, I actually want to give credit to some of their, you know, the people that they're collaborating with, uh, um, because you get so many options with, with their materials and, and like quality materials that's made in America. Uh, you know, like the, the quality materials that you get, um, is, 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 is top notch. Um, so, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't go back a little bit farther than some of these timelines, you know, before the pandemic and everything like that, to say that some of the the growth and in the undertone of staying alive of was um, you know, before Saleh was doing his thing, uh, um, you know, you had mentioned like Bodega and you know, some of these other um shops that were doing uh collaborations. We can't not talk about Kith, uh, you know, before mm -hmm. we go, um, you know, with uh, with Ronnie Fag and and all of his collaboration because he was doing it a lot with Asics um, to keep that you know brand on under the uh, for there was a hot second where he everything he was touching with Asics was crazy, um, you know, but at the same time he was still doing stuff with New Balance at the same time and it was just always like he didn't get the, the love that the Asics got at the same time, but I think over time. 
his the New Balance stuff uh, that that he did um, and continue to do like because that guy he like the way that he picks materials uh, some of his stuff. Uh, wow, because I have the the remake of the Daytona uh, uh, colorway when it, it and and you know the whole presentation like it came with like a bag and a, a extra pair and and had stand socks was involved in it too you know and, and had this the special socks and everything like that so like and i was sitting here like you know how did this not have like this crazy hype like some of these other ones do it's just crazy like the materials is just so premium uh, um, you, know, you know what i'm saying and um you know but yeah definitely couldn't uh um uh, finish up without talking about uh or mentioning uh kith uh because there's so many new balance uh collaborations that they did um that really kept things going and floating like you know just not low but you know floating just right there uh and just keep keep ascending and then when the time was right and the market was ready to accept uh uh, um, uh more of this and you know you talk about the Kanye and a couple other influencers just a couple more people just put it on their feet and then oh yeah you know uh, people introduce you know some people learn how they learn i get it i hope that you know that's why we give you the clarity over the popularity <laughs> uh, um because we just tell it like it is uh, um give that sneaker business talk um but they had to evolve they had to look themselves in the mirror um you know and really uh focus in on what do they want to do um you know and uh, i remember talking about like the james worthy uh, uh new balance you know it's like when are you gonna bring something like that back or whatever you know and it was just like um you didn't think about stuff like that but now it's just you know again similar to like puma um you know these brands have been here for a, quite a long time uh, yeah. you, you know what i mean so they have had longevity um but when it comes to you know urban markets and and um you know pop culture um being interwoven um no matter the origin uh, um you know um i think that that uh you know has been part of their recipe for uh their staying power um and uh their longevity to come because um they're not they uh, they, they had, they're adding more <laughs> um you know they're evolving and they're making things relevant uh, um so i think that you know they're another superstar away uh from uh really uh taking so we'll see what jamal murray does he's already had a couple um um pe's uh released matter of fact I, you know before we go you know you had an order acquisition i Tell you one two on the flip. Like I did get the the two way Jamal Murray two K NBA two K edition. Ooh, you know, right. So so I got them retail off the website. Uh, you know what I mean? And then uh, so what is that like one thirty or something like that? One thirty five mm-hmm. is uh they might have marked it up ten dollars just because it was a special re- release. So it was like kind of these white base rainbow colors and it had the two K logo in there. Jamal Murray signature on there uh, on the tongue and everything like that. Pretty cool. So it took me about three months or whatever. And then I started looking at the prices online and I was just like, because when I got it, I was like, I don't know if I'll ever wear this now. Uh, um, it's a little too white. Um, and it had two, you know, it had all these colors in it. Uh, this is like this rainbow camouflage, like the the rainbow of the De- old food Denver Nuggets. Um, and um, so when I looked at what the prices were, I was like, oh, these got to go. So I sold them for, for uh, like three fifty. dollars and I was like, are you okay? Because again, it was just that limited release, and then that was it, and nobody mm-hmm. was, you know. And I was just like, but those were, easy. I felt like they were easy to get, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, they were still around, you know, half to through half the day, uh, you know. But then once they were gone, they were gone, though, um, uh, you know. And I guess, you know, but 350, you know, I was like, all right, um, you know, I don't think I'll catch lightning in the bottom like that, uh, uh that often, uh, because I know Murray had another um colorway looking but it was all more of a white based pe again uh, um like it was like the washing machine laundry detergent you know mm-hmm. it, it had the decal on there with the spin cycle mm-hmm. uh, um, um you know so i would love to see a little bit more some of his pe's that actually he's worn some pretty good colorways um but they're not those aren't the ones that they're releasing <laughs> uh, so i hope if the nuggets win the championship let's see another uh jamal murray uh two-way uh, championship edition uh, and give us a wider release because that might be all you got uh, uh, for the 
you know, a little tip for you before the NBA season ends, uh, New Balance to squeeze one more, uh, a little bit of juice out. Uh, um, but uh, like how they're moving along with uh, New Balance hoops. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see um, uh, where they're going uh, in, the, in the future because they got to be selective. It's not like they can, you know, it's hard for them to tap into the grassroots. Uh, um, you know, they're not really sponsoring colleges or anything mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and maybe if they want to invest in the high school circuit, but that's a that's a b- big investment uh, that other brands, uh, uh, Nike is already evolving with their grassroots. Uh, you know, and you know, um, Adidas is you know in the middle. You know, trying to reinvent themselves, and then Under Armour's you know really mm-hmm. getting themselves together. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially with the Curry brand um, and and their uh, select camps. So what's going to happen, uh, New Balance, you know, if you want to keep tapping into the youth, you know, um, you know, you're going to have to, um, you know, the NIL deals and things are very relevant from that we've talked about in previous episodes. But for now, um, again, they're going to keep that staying power um, and um, evaluate if those are the type of new customers that they want to acquire. Uh, yeah. um, so... Um, any more last words from the OG on New Balance? Just real quick, Shark. It's been fascinating to me. I'm going through social media. I'm looking at these buy, sell, trade shops across the country, even overseas, and seeing um, a New Balance being on display with a Nike, with a Jordan, you know, with uh, Adidas, and it's not a Bape or a Supreme. It's a regular quote unquote GR colorway or like a 2002 protection pack. And it's on display selling for 250 or what have you. And they're moving, going into these shops when I get the opportunity and seeing, you know, they actually have a whole table or, you know, a whole display dedicated to New Balance. And um, it's, it's just been transitioned for me to kind of see that. So Whatever they're doing, they're doing right, and they've been hitting. And um, it's it's just interesting to me to see how this is going to go, and like you to say how they're going to tap into the grassroots part. And um, I really think with this brand, um, because of how they go about things, and just again the quality, and again to talk about consistency brings on familiarity, which brings on respect, which brings on longevity. And um, I'm glad that they have been able to catch on to the culture, and they have not. Um, deterred to their quality at all to try to um, profit a little bit more and so forth. So I think that from a pure standpoint, um, people respect and admire the consistency that they get from the New Balance brand. And it's good to see, even with the hype beast of hype beasts, um, they're appreciating that aspect um, of the brand and of the culture and of the game overall. Nice. Well, there you go. Another uh, sneaker business talk episode uh, in the in the books from the podcast to cheer for. So uh, from Soul Material Podcast, signing off. Uh, it's T Bart the Street Shark. And your man OGEO. Peace to you. Peace.